CTM is back, some would say, but to me, CTM has always been there. Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I'm going to show you a CTM deck that actually illustrates very well how a resilient deck is built that has a dual game plan for victory. Now, when you mention the term dual game plan, most people think of you know a deck that, for example, can flatline as well as can win by agenda points. That's a very simplistic view, I think. While it is true that decks that only have one way to win are generally less resilient against hate cards and run attack cards in general, um, there are lots of ways to implement dual game plans. They don't need to be, you know, dual flatline agenda wins, even though those are the two um, win cons um, in Netrunner. In dual game plan CTM, what you're actually preparing for is not two ways to win, uh, as in two different, w I mean, yeah, winning by a flat line or agenda points, but rather having two separate plans against tagless runners and tag me runners. And um, the cards, I mean, the cards in your deck, some of them are dead against the tagless matchup, some are dead against the tag me matchup, but uh, they all synergize with each other pretty well, and that's why this is still a very strong deck, even though... Um, yeah, uh, hate cards such as Aaron Maroon most notably have been printed uh, since the inception of CTM's horror. Uh, it was it used to be a very good deck back in the day uh, at 2016 Worlds, but now uh, because of hate cards, it's slightly less effective. However, as I said, if you can build a CTM deck that is able to fare well, that has a solid game plan against both Tagless and Tang Me, uh, you might be good to go. And this is exactly what I'm trying to build here. So let's have a look at the deck list. Um, as mentioned, we have Tollbooth, uh, which is a very key remote ice for dealing with tagless runners. Tagless runners usually take some time to set up their engine and to protect themselves against tags using cards like Employee Strike and Aaron Maroon. Well, you can punish them by scoring agendas behind Tollbooths too quickly before they can react. As for tag me runners, you want ice such as resistors, IP blocks, and speed bumps such as close accounts to help you in your quests to uh, find the psychographics and build combo. One very notable thing about this particular CTM deck list I'm about to play is that there's a very notable combo missing from traditional CTM. That's why, right, it's the exchange of information into global food combo. With only one global food in the deck, um, exchange of information becomes a lot less good. So instead of playing that combo, we are going to go with psychographics instead as our win condition. In that sense, you can think of the dual win combo uh, condition as against tag me runners, psychographics is your win con. Against tagless runners, toll booth into Bills and Astros is your win con. So in that sense, this is the dual game plan I'm trying to uh, play out, and we'll see that in action right now. <laughs> Today we are up against Haley Kaplan and this is a terribly tough Marlo keep. I decide to keep in the end, even though you want a uh, turn 1 Sensi against Haley, which almost certainly cannot contest uh, the turn 1 Sensi, my hand, opening hand could be a lot worse. Uh, right now I have a piece of ice to defend R&D against deep data mining, which is very common in Shaper decks nowadays, and I have a pack campaign uh, to generate drip economy, as well as Jackson in my hand, which is a pseudo sensi. So I was fine with my opening, and I mandatorily drew into the second pack campaign, so I decided to go with double pad instead of the Jackson, instead choosing to drop the Jackson as well as the sneaky Bill this turn. It's gonna be a win-win for me because I already do find, I've already found the hard-hitting news in my hand, so if my opponent decides to go for my Bill, they're gonna be greeted with a nasty nasty 4 tags. So it's a win-win for me either way. And this is the kind of fork you want to produce as CTM. Run and you lose, don't run, and I win. Uh, my opponent does get a New Angeles City Hall down, which is really nasty. Uh, it stops my breaking news plans, but all that is thwarted when they actually run my build. So two pieces of bad news for them. Not only do they lose their New Angeles Hall from stealing an agenda, they also get hit by hard-hitting news. With only four credits on their, in their pool, they take four tags. So this is why you don't run last click. Uh, if my opponent had run first click, uh, they would have done different things, including clicking for credits uh, before throwing the, out the cast and making it harder for me to land a hard-hitting you. So, a bit of a misplay by my opponent there, but we move on as my opponent is able to clear all four tags successfully with daily cast money. So my opponent is still in this game, make no mistake. Even though I landed a successful hard-hitting news, they were able to clear the tags, and I do not have any follow-up punishment for my opponent. Um, no breaking news, no agenda scores, no nothing. Uh, we are back to square one, although I do have two pack campaigns running, and a bit of a fair bit of money. 
Unfortunately, my opponent gets a lot of money as well. With Aesops and the Ticking Daily Cast, my opponent actually recovers very quickly and drops the bad, big bad news on me. Three rabbit holes. Who plays rabbit holes now? Jeez, this is the worst possible matchup for CTM. Link completely wrecks my deck. As such, um, I realized that the only way I was going to win this game is to start jamming behind a remote. Maybe get breaking news out to close their accounts. That's the only way I can get back into this game. So I immediately drop the Sand Sand behind an Enigma. So if they do decide to go for... Uh, if I do find an agenda, it's going to get scored. With the amount of money I have, I can easily score an Astro Script or a Breaking News off that Sand Sand to convert Tempo to my side. Um, unfortunately, my, my opponent does something very smart here. They are pressuring R&D and then use Indexing because I, forced, I was forced to rest the pop-up there. Um, now they can index me and get a bunch of agendas of R&D. This is really bad news for me. Why am I forced to rest the pop-up? Well, if it were any other ice, I could have chosen not to res it. But given this situation, I think my opponent would have gone for the indexing even if I did not res the pop-up there. Um, I might be wrong on that, but it felt like um, since there was a pop-up there, I may as well have res the pop-up to gain money, uh, given that they were going to get through regardless. So at this point, I'm jacksoning for... A scorable agenda as well as some good ice to put on R&D. Archangel would be great. Turnpike would be fantastic. So, I mean, IP block would be fantastic. I don't have either of those, so I, I IP block is probably my best... Uh, sorry, Turnpike is my best bet here. It doesn't hard end the run, but at least it's a deterrent for future indexings. Um, I'm, I'm starting to shape up a very nice hand, um, including a sweeps and a hedge in my HQ. This is actually quite important because I can then uh, get the money advantage when my opponent least ex expects it. I'm in no hurry to play these two operations just yet. In the meantime, my opponent sets up big money, Blue Moose comes out, and Blue Moose is going to generate so much money for my opponent over the course of the entire game. In fact, it does rival the double pair campaign I have. So this is a very scary notion for me, and I need to quickly um, assert uh, agenda point advantage before my opponent gets too far out of hand. I ditched Psychographics here because I don't think I'm going to be able to land another hard-hitting news anytime soon, given that one's ready in the bin. Actually, I think I shuffled it back. Uh, yeah, I did shuffle the hard-hitting news I used earlier in back into the deck, but yeah, I, don't, I haven't drawn another one yet, so I don't think I'm going to land tags anytime soon, so the best thing I can do here is to score agendas for my opponent still hasn't found a breaker. They are not that rich, and they haven't... They don't have a single breaker, and they are trying to challenge my Jackson here, uh, to get, uh, get, yeah, to get to get rid of the anti-indexing card. So pretty smart by them, and the CTM penalty is almost irrelevant because they have three link. So yeah, I can't punish them for trashing the Jackson, even though I'm richer than them. I don't have a hard hitting news. What I do have, however, is an Astro script which I'm going to score next turn. If only my opponent didn't get the clot threat out. They found the SMC, which means that they can threaten clot. Thankfully, I drew the right card here, the toll booth that will protect my Astro Script if they clot. Um, it was very hard to keep the toll booth at the expense of the sen Sensi. My DBS showed Sensi and toll booth. You would almost always keep Sensi, especially when you have a uh, virtual toll in your hand. But given that I had an Astro to score and I needed to score agendas right there, and then this was the right play. Get the toll booth in case they go for clot, I can defend with toll booth. Enigma is not sufficient because my opponent might be running Zoo or Sai Sai, which can easily steal uh, the Astro script from me, and I wouldn't have any way to punish them for doing so. So I needed a hard end of run, a very strong end of run to stop my opponent from scoring the Astro, which is the toll booth right there. They do get the clock out, I'm very happy to see that because I knew full well they were not getting to my remote um, to steal the Astro. So this is the problem with clock. If you get clock out, you better make sure you have a way to steal the agenda as well. Otherwise, uh, getting the clock out just slows you down and doesn't do much and opens you to purging from your opponent. So my opponent tried to run without a single breaker. Of course, they can't get in. The toll stops them and drains a lot of money. So there's no way they're going to be able to get a breaker to get in. And even if they have a David by some crazy chance, I still have an Enigma in the innermost to stop them cold. With my triple pack campaign now up, there's no way that, uh, I can easily score the Astro next turn without worrying about money. Not to mention that I sweeps and hedge my hand. Now my opponent again does something very smart. While I can't get in the remote, I'm going to pressure R&D. And there's very little I can do to stop them. I can rest the turnpike and I will, knowing full well I have three pack campaigns to give me money to score the Astro script next turn. So I'm going to rest the turnpike here and tax them out. 
Um, I actually pump the trace by one to ensure that they have to take the tag. If they don't take the tag, they can't get through R&D. Curiously enough, my opponent actually chose not only to take the tag, but also to continue into the server. I felt this was a mistake, kind of. I mean, yeah, a two credit swing at this point is a big deal. And yeah, they hit the Archangel. So that's really nasty for them. Um, even though we're both poor, I had to spend all three of my credits to land the Archangel Fire, but this allows me to bounce Blue Moose. This is a huge, huge deal. Um, sure, they can reinstall Blue Moose at a later time, but denying them the passive double pack campaign per turn is huge. They have to clear the tags, they have to click to four credits and reinstall Blue Moose just to get it up again. I think this was well worth it given that I had three pack campaigns ticking and a DBS to boot. So very, very huge hit there um that was a very lucky archangel hit from me even though i bankrupted myself doing so i knew that i could bounce back very easily not to mention the sweeps and hatch that are in my hand my opponent thinks that i'm too poor to do anything now but i can easily play sweeps hatch and score the astro all in the same turn watch me do that right now so yeah blue moose is a very huge threat to any uh, credit based deck such as ctm you want to be richer than your opponent you want your opponent to be poor and blue moose prevents that Right? Uh, it's like Temujin. It generates so much money over the course of the game. So as CTM, it is important to be fast and to deal with the blue moves swiftly, either by closing their accounts off a of breaking news or by trashing it off a of breaking news or punishing them with hard hitting news as I did as I tried to do at least earlier. So you saw me do that. Sweeps hatch score astro off Sen Sen. I even rest the Sen Sen there. Um, the alternative was the sweeps and double advance the Astro, scoring it without raising the Sand Sand. But I felt like raising the Sand Sand here was a no-brainer, given that my opponent does not have the money to trash the Sand Sand, let alone get past the toll booth defending it. So very easy choice for me. This Sand Sand threat is huge. Without a New Angeles City Hall, they can't possibly um, get the Blue Moose down without worrying about a possible breaking news into killing Blue Moose. My opponent has to be worried about tags, and this is one way you can counter Blue Moose. A lot of other corps, HB, your Waylon, have a very hard time dealing with Blue Moose because it's such an efficient uh, drip economy card. Well, with NBN, Tag Storm is a thing, and um, Blue Moose decks will have to respect the power of um, breaking news and hard-hitting news. So yes, I feel like CTM's time to shine might be back. If everyone is playing Blue Moose, well, this is one way to punish them. Land those tags. Kill that blue moose. Punish them for playing a 4 install cost resource. That's the way to do it. Uh, the criminal matchup might be hard. Uh, don't get me wrong, blue moose in run base Andromeda is going to be so powerful. And with Aaron Marone, you can't kill blue moose easily. So this could be a very big problem. But in the meantime, my opponent gets the cash going and restores the economy. So yeah, no matter what I do, I can't seem to drain my opponent's economy fast enough. They are rebuilding again, they have the rabbit hole threat, I need to find agendas at this point. So I have two routes here. I could choose to purge the clot. I'm cu currently counting influence to decide whether they have um, clone chips in their deck. I decided there was a good chance they had clone chips. Given that they're Haley. there's no reason not to run clone chip, especially when you're running cash. So I felt like purging the clot this turn would be a losing proposition for me because even if I draw an agenda next turn, if they get a clone chip down, it's very hard for me to score it. Instead, what I'm going to do is to build up even more drip advantage by installing Sensi and uh, Virtual Tour. This way, I get a lot of advantage when my turn begins and therefore it gives me more reason to purge later on. Uh, because purging is a waste of my entire turn, but if I'm getting money and Sensi draws while I'm at it, it's a lot better. My opponent goes for a Hail Mary on R&D here with an indexing. This is a very strong play, and there's, again, there's not much I can do about this. Given the ice that I've drawn, none of them really end the run. So yeah, my opponent's free to go for indexing here, and this could easily lose me the game. Given that I there are only two agendas of, I think, 11. 10, yeah, 11, there are 11 agendas in my deck. Two of them are in the score areas, which means nine of them are in R&D right now. All they need to do is to find three in the top five, run R&D three times, they win. Uh, bad news, <laughs> they're going for a mad dash, so they only need to see two two-pointers with a mad dash to win. Um, the turnpike trace fires, I'm not going to boost it this time, and surprisingly, they do actually uh, pump to, clear, uh, to avoid the trace. 
So this means that they don't win off this indexing, which is very, very fortunate for me. They could have easily won on this indexing or the previous one. But the indexing so far have been pretty poor. All the agendas seem to be stuck at the bottom. So this is good for me. Now, unfortunately, again, this would be a very good time to land a hard-hitting news, but I missed. Uh, no hard-hitting news here. Or maybe my opponent buried it with indexing. Oh, wait! There it is. Yep, my opponent tried to bury the hard-hitting news, but unfortunately, due to the draw power of Sensi, they know I found it. So I'm going to defend R&D with IP block and land the tags. So this is where IP block comes in. If my opponent oversteps the boundaries, as they did here, going to so low a credit level to get the indexing off, I punish them with tags and IP block suddenly turn on. If they don't have a fractor, they can't get into R&D again. This is my plan. So now they're sealed off, and what can they do? They can't clear the tags. They don't have the money. They e sops the clot, but they can't clear all four tags in the turn. Um, so after deliberating for a while, knowing that they can't clear all four tags, they decided to draw and then clear two tags. Um, clearing tags is on a deck by deck basis and also on a game state basis. At this point, my opponent does not have the rig set up at all. No decoder, no fractor and no R&D digging cards. They cannot go tank me. If they go tank me, they'll be forced to click for credits when they need to install breakers. And that is a losing proposition. That's way too slow for CTM. So my opponent has to go avoid the tags here and get the economy set up again. Uh, and you don't, really don't want to be do that when your opponent has a Sensi and a pack and pack campaign sticking. So yeah, my opponent's in a very bad position right now. The whiff indexing was really a Hail Mary, and this run on HQ was very ill-advised. Um, I'm not sure what they're trying to get off the HQ run here, but what they do get off is an Archangel Fire, which I happily oblige, since I have three pack campaigns up. It's simply one turn of pack campaigns worth of money, and I can bounce a card. Since it's a last click run, I'm bouncing the rabbit hole, because I know I can trash the Aesop's next turn. Aesop's is their only economy left. With that gone, Haley has no outs at all. If this were a Magnum Opus deck, it would be a different story because I cannot interact with their economy engine. But against a Blue Moose Aesop's deck, well, if you don't get enough money, you're in trouble. And yeah, I think my opponent uh, was playing very aggressively for, an, for a quick win, which I think was possibly a mistake given that they do have rabbit holes. With a deck that is so reliant on Aesop's, on the Aesop's Blue Moose combo for money, um, if my opponent actually allowed me to score the Astro, if they didn't clot um, and bought themselves a couple of turns to set up, I think they would have won. Um, gaining 5 credits a turn from Aesop's Blue Moose and setting up the rig, there was very little I could do to contest the triple rabbit hole deck. Uh, IP block would be blank, resistor would be blank. But instead, with the aggressive running, trying to get early agendas, um, Given that I had very, very fortunate draw luck with very few agendas early on, um, my opponent wasn't able to win quickly, and as a result, now they're getting double hard hitting news. Um, since they actually ran HQ last turn and hit my Archangel, I was able to land the hard hitting news this turn, and now they're flooded with six tags. This is not something they can clear, and this is basically game for them. All I need to do is to drag out the game by burying all my agendas with Sensi and DBS, and they have no inroads to R&D at all because they have no breakers, IP block would stop them dead cold. With that, it's basically game over, my opponent conceded. Wow, that seemed like a dumb strategy, you say. Repeated hard-hitting news, that's so broken. But in order to land the repeated hard-hitting news in the first place, there was actually a very strong workhorse, a strong engine behind that. You'll notice that my opponent just couldn't deal with uh, the assets that I put out. The high trash cost pack campaigns and DBS did so much work in filtering through my deck, burying agendas, and most importantly, finding me the double hard-hitting news. They were quite rather deep down in my deck, but being able to dig through my deck swiftly with Sensis and DBS was very important. A lot of Shaper decks nowadays do not have the means to contest assets. They say, hey, I'll ignore your assets, Estelle Moon spam decks. I'll just repeatedly deep data mining you. Well, make them respect your assets with CTM. Um, I think uh, slow shaper decks that rely a lot of resources are a scourge in the meta because they are equally oppressive. Um, some people think CTM is oppressive. Well, I think shaper decks are even more oppressive uh, given how they are able to lock out uh, those fair corp decks that try to score behind remotes. 
Um, and so CTM is a very good counter to that, especially now in the era where Blue Moose just generates so much economy. Toll Booth is such a good showstopper as well. That was the main reason that uh, I won, because it was able to protect the agendas that I would have pumped out, and my opponent just never could amass the economy to contest a Toll Booth remote. I would just keep jamming items behind Toll Booth and force them to check it, even if they had the clock threat. Toll Booth counters clock very well, because they are still forced to check remotes. It also allows me to um, disrupt the economy to the point where they were lower than they were on less than five credits throughout most of the mid to late game, allowing me to land those hard hitting uses. Why else do you think it was so easy to land hard hitting news? My opponent could easily generate five credits every turn with the blue moose Aesop's combo, but instead, uh, they tried to play aggressively and were punished by Tobuf and my assets for it. So yes. Blue Moose is actually a very very strong economy card that even gives CTM a problem. However, this is a good showcase of how you can counter Blue Moose. So if you hate Blue Moose, control the message yourself. Play a corp that disrupts Blue Moose directly. Trust me, it's going to be a very annoying card to deal with because it gives the runners so much economy uh, for no influence. And controlling the message could be one option to deal with Blue Moose with fighting fire with fire. Thanks for watching! And I hope you enjoyed this video. Happy net running. I'll see you next time.